Hello pilots, it is Hero of Dunkirk time. We are going to take a look at all four of the aircraft in the package and uh, tell you a little bit about them and show you what I'm, what I'm doing with them and we'll play one battle in each as well. I'll break down chapters for you uh, when I post this video so that you have an opportunity to skip to the plane that you want if you would like, but I do encourage you to watch all four of these. They are all unique planes in their own way and so as a result of that, I enjoy all four of them. So uh, before we get started and too deeply into this, if you haven't subscribed yet, do me a favor, do that, subscribe down below. And uh, at the end of the video, if you have enjoyed things, put a like down there. If you haven't liked it, tap this like button twice to make sure it goes through and all will be well. We're going to start with the Boo, Boo Fighter, <laughs> the Bow Fighter 5, uh, which was introduced into the game a couple of years ago with a unique feature that the uh, turret uh, rotates fully forward. And so that does give you some additional firepower. It also rotates fairly quickly. Uh, mine is stock, obviously. I've never specialized it. I've barely flown it, but it is an interesting plane. I've got boost on here. I've got gas operated action to squeeze some DPS out of the main armament, which is two 20 millimeter cannons down here. And I have a uh, turret gun sight to raise the optimal distance of the guns, uh, which you can see over here is now 654 and 191 on the DPS on the 20s. Uh, this is an interesting plane from a performance perspective. You can tell cruise speed has got it 490 and boost speed at 538. So, and you got 28 seconds of boost. So your boost doesn't really do a whole lot for you. Um, and so you really need to watch your energy in this plane um, and really be careful with it. I've put in a pilot I have that's going up the heavy line right now that is a Guru 1 and 2. Um, and that has helped improve the top speed a little bit along with this booster. This plane is also interesting in that until you specialize it, um, you don't get a gun sight and you also don't have uh, any um, upgraded ammo for your turret, which is just as well because this thing's a little monster uh, with these. Uh, I mean, they're Browning 303s, but they chew stuff up. So we're going to play uh, four matches, as I said, go through this and see what happens in each of them. None of the gear on here is specialized or improved at all, as I've mentioned before. Until the plane is specialized, I don't lock it, like locking the gear in. Um, I want to be able to have the opportunity to play around with different builds, see what kind of works for me, how I feel about the aircraft uh, before I lock it in, um, knowing that you know tokens can bring stuff off, but I'm also saving my tokens um, you know, to do other things with at this point, especially tier 10 aircraft. Uh, which take a long time to specialize. We got the mining plant, uh, which is good. Uh, we can deal with uh, maybe some bombers or ground attackers here. Two airstrips, two garrisons, one of the oldest maps in the game here. Archipelago, which I think originally was Midway back in the day. We've got a 109F on our team. We have a video coming out on this later, a replay review for you on the 109F. We're up against a P-40 and a special uh, and a zero, both specialized. And uh, JU-88, PE-2. Oh, too. Interesting. All right. So, yeah, we're, we're going to get us some bombers. Um, you can tell the turret here is rotated forward to begin with, as opposed to most turrets, which are rotated backwards. Um, and so it will have a, have a benefit, and then it'll start firing very quickly. Um, I am above the altitude regime for this fighter, but we're just going to deal with it. Um, we want to get in there and, and take down these bombers and hopefully flip this mining plant because so much depends on it. And you can see, look, I'm boosting... I'm, I'm capping out at 517 um, because I am up in that yellow. So this is a, a good demonstration for you, and I'll talk about this a little bit in the other video I have coming for you with 109F. But you are debuffed at this altitude. Your speed goes down, your engine power goes down, your accuracy goes down. Everything is down. So as you can see, the gun's not exactly hype. does make shooting down bombers a little tougher, but we need to clear these guys out. We do have a pretty decent burst time on these, as you can see. And honestly, although the guns are low as compared to, all right, good, he's got the P2. Although these guns are low DPS as compared to other heavies, um, particularly at tier five. What did we just lose that we went down? Oh, Lord, he got killed by the bomber. Did he, or did he not go? Okay, there we go, I'll say. We just need to get this uh, GAA under control, and all will be well. Where did he go? Oh, gosh. 
You can see the only thing that gets you above your boost speed is your dive speed, and you will need to utilize that in this plane. Fortunately, it handles fairly well. Oh, this ought to be interesting. As the uh, other, you can see the bullet spring there, that forward firing turret, right? It does help. All right, let's just make a solid. There we go. Now let's go smack this air base up here. We're going to stay on the offensive as one does. I'm going to hit the boost cooler. Honestly, uh, pro tip, when you cap this zone, frickin' leave it. Uh, there's, you know, your presence there can only cost you the 60 points, right? Um, it's kind of easier to wait, keep an eye on it, and uh, let the uh, let the GAs kind of close in and then pop someone, and preferably if you can stay at altitude, that's a good thing. And again, it pays to stay aggressive on this map and, and every map, I think, so. These guys are following the XP or the Key 45 up. We're going to follow them even as something is following us. But we do have a really boffo tail gunner here. here. I'll show you guys. Oh, got out of range. You really need that specialized, you know, when this plane is specialized, you can really open up that turret range on it. Um, it gets pretty deadly pretty fast. And again, the guns are not bad, they're just bad for a heavy. Does that make sense? Like, 200 DPS at tier 5 is not a terrible thing. Look at that. It's crazy how long, how quickly it locks in. And how quickly the turret turns, obviously, is a big deal as well. Come on. You do have a pneumatic assist on this, strangely enough. So you can get around in your turns if you need to. Okay, let's kill him before he kills our guy. There we go. Zone flipped. Get some extra points there. And in the meantime, they have taken the mining plant. So we're going to have two minutes to go flip it back. And that's exactly what we're going to do. It's just unlocked. We're going to hit it. We're going to send the bots here. The bots don't have anywhere else to go anyway. In the meantime, they're struggling because we've got their air bases. So they're going to have to spawn from their spawn, take a little bit longer to get in here to defend or do whatever else. And we do see this heavy here. We're going to boost towards it. Let that boost cooler work passively, actually. Back. All right. Well, let's let's dive on these guys. This is 100. We've been 160 to capture the zone. There's 120 points sitting right here between these two aircraft. Let's get one. Let's get two. You see the dive speed caps out there at a fairly decent. I wanted this guy to turn. All right. We're gonna we're gonna let him do his thing. We want to drag him back into the zone. Because honestly, we want those 60 points. Is there any ships I can finish off with a strafing run while we drag him in? Not really. These guns are, as I said, pretty pretty anemic. Okay, here we go. Zero is headed in. Nice thing about this turret, too, is the 360 degrees of goodness. it up. And now we need is that 10 more points. Uh, oh, we're not going to get it. And that was a bad call. Normally the 30 millimeters, yes, good call to head on stuff. Nope, not here. I got more hit points, right? Um, and that's a problem. They've recaptured their zone. They are actively working. This is the reason you need to stay on your toes and keep capping zones because the enemy is going to do it as well. 
Uh, as you can see, they're not going to go down without a fight. We're doing well. Broken is doing a good job. Climb. I'll wait until I get in closer again with these guns. Watch the turret spray. You can tell when it kind of locks in and that spray goes away, can't you? It's fascinating. Oh, Lord. How do we get into this mess? We might be going down here. Yep, yep, we're going down. Uh, we came over, I did not expect to have five, five enemy aircraft over here. This was their zone. Um, it would be unusual to have that many people capping or trying to defend a single garrison on the map, especially when everything else is there, right? So that's a little wacky. We'll uh, we'll watch Broken do his thing here. The enemy is about to win. Mm. Don't head on a P-40, my man. Oh, what are we doing? What? And with the plant is gone. This, this game's over. This game is over because of a head-on ram that you were never going to win. Oof. All right. This no offense, Broken, but this is why I make these videos. We just threw the game away with a very, very easily avoidable mistake. Um, the kind of thing that one should never do at any point in the game, should never do at any point when flying a 109F. Don't take head-ons. Um, that was that was interesting. Yeah, um, hopefully it's a mistake that we learn from, right? And when it doesn't happen again. Because um, that did, that literally cost us the game right there. Um, with him in the match, um, there's only six planes left. Yep, and uh, that would be easy to kind of whittle them down, maybe retake the mining plant. Um, so, yeah, unfortunate, very, very unfortunate. It's going to cost us a loss there. Uh, so, uh, you know, weird that they had five guys um, over a zone that they already owned. Um, weird to have a 109F that's doing that well. Um, go head on with a P-40 and suicide. Um just kind of rough right there. So there you go. Um, we'll uh, we'll move on to the next one though. Uh, so that's the that's the Bowfighter Five, as you can tell. Um, it's a fun little plane. It does have its uh, interesting parts. It's not uh, not super great in terms of uh, yeah, in terms of its performance. Not the best tier five heavy. Um, but if you like having a massive turret and you want to take the time to specialize it. Um, you can certainly have some fun with it. That's that's what I would say. So, good match. We rock out with a Maguire and a Conqueror and a Grade Three. So there you go, and we take first in the uh, in the match there because of our grade rather than personal points. I happen to agree with that. I think grade is a better measure of success than personal points um, in terms of your outcome on the match, um, and so I'll I'll certainly take that. We took care of bombers, we took care of ground attackers, we flipped the zones, we did what we could. Four zones, look at that. This is this is what I mean. This is this is what wins you games generally, right? So and we'll do what I always do afterwards. You know, they won the game, how many zones did they cap versus us? Generally speaking, if we cap more zones, we should have won. Six. Four. Yeah. We should have won. I mean, as that that ram was that ram killed us, unfortunately. So hopefully next time, broken. No ramming, no ramming, buddy. No ramming. Just don't do it. Live, live and fight another day. You know, that's um, another couple of minutes of the game, another flipped zone, and that might have been a different story altogether. So there you go. Uh, interesting plane. The the uh, Bowfighter Five here has these four camouflages, um, and then um, here is also the neutral or all, all weather camouflage and then the one you get with it in the bundle which is very very similar uh to oh i think i had the i did i had the all i had the special camouflage on that match um and to have the marine on so there you go bowfighter five uh if you enjoy it go for it
So second in the list, we are going to run with the HE-111, the bomber. Um, I already owned the bomber uh, when I bought the package. The only one I did not own was the E3. But as you can see, even though I owned it, it gave me the camouflage with it. So that was not a concern. If it was a concern for you guys, you're still going to get the camouflage even if you own the plane, as long as you don't already own the camouflage. So. I uh, also got both the pilots I've got, and I'll have them in these planes when we fly them. But the 111 is more like um, an American bomber than it is a German bomber. It's not a Schnell bomber. Um, so I have range on the turrets again. Um, this one I have gone ahead and, and locked it in. I've played it enough to feel pretty good about it. Uh, the bombing accuracy I want, especially with clusters of bombs, which is what this one drops. Uh, turret range I want uh, because there's a lot of damage that you need to put out to put some planes down at tier four and and then of course um, uprated engine just get that cruise speed up. Um, the boost will take you up a little higher but there's such a wide gap between your cruise and your boost you really need to just have the boost down all the time and this takes it down. I've also got a little defensive in terms of what I've got here bring the gunners back up bring the engine back up make sure I don't lose them for too long. So. Let's uh, let's do this. By the way, um, summer, winter. I love the winter camo on this. I love it. The summer camo is pretty dope as well. The desert looks fantastic. Marine is fun, and then this is the all weather one, just sort of that German green. And then this one, I I don't remember what the X is for. Some of you history buffs in there, let me know what the X is for down there. If it was a Condor Legion thing in the Spanish Civil War, or if it was something else, but. Nonetheless, uh, let's jump in. I've got my DOE 17 pilot. We've got protection expert, which is not actually helping us a whole lot here. Aerodynamics expert, which is, and of course, the demolition expert. And then the gunner from my tier 10 multi-role. I uh, got some stuff up there to help us. Uh, we need a gunner who can do a little bit in auto mode because we'll need to concentrate on getting our bombs onto target a little bit. So we're gonna fly this up in its, uh, in its good range here, sort of at the very top of its uh, altitude regime and hopefully, hopefully, uh, be able to uh, put it to good use. It really depends on the lineup uh, in these matches. I've tried to record this in prime time to get you, huh, there you go, get you as many players as I can. Uh, this match will probably get shellacked by the 38F and the 110. So we'll make our way around the zone. Um, it'll be interesting to see who we run into and where. Um, and where our people go. Um, would probably be best for me. It's a little, a little more to go this way, but I think that's gonna put us out of the sights of the heavies. Um, and we're gonna go up. Nice little gunner there. Gotta be cold for him. At least these guys get to be inside, right? Uh, and there's. And also begs the question, how do you get out? <laughs> uh, I think it's there's a drop down in the nose there. That may be the only thing. All right, let's switch to bomb site and see what we can do here. Uh, we can probably get a pattern going. We've got these four sets of bombs here. So we're gonna swing it in. And we'll, well actually we're gonna do, let's see if we can do two sets on each of these. Let's start stringing them. And let's start stringing them. I'm not a very good bomber, so this may be a bad strategy. And it's already locked. Let's go ahead and get our reload going. Let's get out of bomb site mode. Um, I was actually, I should have been down a little bit. You, you don't want to be in the yellow. You really don't. Um, you lose accuracy, you lose speed, you lose everything. I know people like to play up here in their bombers because they don't want heavies coming after them and killing them. You're gonna have to deal with it. Um, if you're gonna play bombers in this game, heavies are gonna come after you. You're gonna have to deal with them. It's gonna be an issue. Um, so you can see there's a very quick reload on this. Uh, so not a big deal to hit that V button and queue it up. And again, even up here, it takes a while, you know, at 2000 meters, it's gonna take a while for people to get to us. So, I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. Let this reload come in. And get some wiggle. We do have a great deal of hit points, which is fun and awesome. God, we're gonna have to, didn't quite time that reload right, did we? All right, here we go. We're gonna 
dodge those heavies. Keep them guessing. And immediately go to the turret. Flying in circles because it's harder for the, the you know, heavies don't turn very well, right? So we're just going to keep this flat circle and we're going to keep shellacking them, keeping this turret fire going, and hold, holding to our high HP to keep us where we need to be. All right, awesome. Well done. We're at four zones to one. Now, I am going to get up probably a little higher because we do have to cross our zone there. Uh, their zone, their starting zone there to our right. Uh, we could probably dip it a little bit. Yeah, they're not going to come up after me, especially with me leaving the zone. So I can dive a little bit here. What do they got? Specialized. Oh, 111 as well. There you go. His is specialized, though. I don't know if I can get any guns on him over there or not. A little bit. A little bit of guns. Hey, Abeno. Well, I'm pretty, actually pretty thankful he decided not to, uh, not to engage in that since he's got full, full HP and I'm still working on it. So we got some help over here on this zone, which is great. We're going to get our speed up. Power through some bomb drops on this. I hope we can finish off what we need to. Alright, good. This one's gone as well. It's four and one. They've recaptured their zone over here. They're going to head for the airfield most likely. So we are going to hit that boost and run. Oops. This guy may want a piece of us. Nope. Nothing doing. They did just capture the airfield. The airfield sw uh, switches so quickly, though. And there's such a desire for people to gain those personal points sitting over the middle of it uh, that we're not going to worry about it. We're not going to go there. We just really can't be all that effective. So there's enough air defense aircraft. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll let them worry about that. We want this garrison. This time our bombs are going to be up. And that's going to be much better for us. Quite swing this right. Let's see if we can do that. Especially since we know the AA over here is pretty fierce. There we go. Much better. This one's an armored ground target. Let's get a double drop on it. Same thing, we're just gonna circle jerk these guys. Keep that AA guessing. And try and keep him from getting really guns on on us. My gun's not working. We may lose here. I 
Not sure what was wrong with our guns there. I'd say it's taken way longer than I thought. Some of you are good bomber pilots can tell me why I'm... There we go. And down we go for the hurricane. But we did our job. We flipped the zone, which brought us the air supremacy. And we'll say well played, soldado. That was good stuff. We're down, but it's too late. Uh, we put it away. So there you go. Even a rookie bomber pilot like me can get a win every now and then. <laughs> Good job, team. Uh, you did well. Other team, you guys put it together as well. Just wasn't quite enough this time. So, good stuff. I got a, I got a win in the HE 111. I, I wish this plane was just a smidge better because I would love to play a historical aircraft like this. And, you know, especially as a bomber, it feels, it actually, I say I want it to be stronger. It actually feels pretty balanced. I mean, honestly, for a bomber, I mean, if one of those tier five heavies had decided to tangle with me, I would have been down. And um, so, but we did a did a good bit of damage. You know, we, we rocked it out. We captured three sectors, three sectors. And I'm sure if I were a better bomber pilot, this would have been an even better match. So um, I'm excited about that win. Uh, let's just count it up. Let's see. Uh, Nogri got three zones for us. Orin got three zones for us. It's eight total, uh, 11 total, 14 total, 15 total. Yeah, Let's switch, switch planes there. So we got 15 total. They had four, seven, 10, 11, uh, 14, 15. So there you go pretty close uh usually it comes down to two like are we all capping like if three of us are capping the same zone at the same time right that can make a difference as well but did pretty good did a good bit of damage there i'll take it again those of you who are bomber pilots you know give me some tips there what i do right what did i do wrong what could i be doing better um we we did what we could but that's uh that's the other one you know are you gonna fly it all the time oh, there's the that's right the hatch is up here on the 111 um you know, are you going to fly it all the time? Probably not, unless you're a bomber pilot, in which case I think it's a solid bomber probably that you could get some enjoyment out of. But it's a fun change of pace, especially at Tier 4, um, and especially if you have you know ground attack missions at Tier 4 uh, dailies that you want to get done. And it's a historical plane. You know, why not? Um, so if you were looking at it and you were really buying it for the 1 and 9E and the Spitfire, and maybe the Bowfighter, you're like, eh, you can go 111. Eh. It's good for some fun matches every now and then. There you go. All right, on to the two that you guys have been dying to play. Uh, we're going to do Spitfire and then the 109E3 uh, because the 109E3 is fairly new to me. Uh, the 1A I actually have specialized. I'm not actually bothered to go in and upgrade the equipment a whole lot, though. So you can see that here. But uh, this is what I run on it. Um, turns and speed, a little bit of speed there. Um, not too worried about... Um, a whole lot in terms of speed really just want the cruise speed up a little bit because you can see the the boost speed there which is one that you're probably not going to hit right there's just too much of a gap there's 230 240 kph between between these two uh, i do have the pilot charles donovan we just have the kind of the, the regular stuff on him and then i put on aerodynamics expert and as you can see the turn time is ridiculous um, especially given the speed and the, and the boost speed there. So this is a fairly solid, and the climb rate's excellent as well. It's a good plane all around. This is also uh, like the 109E3, uh, good for close-in fighting. It is a knife fighter, you know, 440, but once you're inside 440, you can shred some things. So let's take this out and see what happens with it. Um, one note on the camouflages on this one, I love that the 1A and the E3 have a camouflage built into the base skin. Uh, that's a wonderful thing. Of course, it doesn't give you any in-game bonuses, but, you know, it's lovely to at least have the aircraft painted in some way, especially if you don't want to spend the credits on it. Um, but for some reason, this utilizes the Tier 5 Spitfire's paint schemes, and the Tier 5 Spitfire's paint schemes... Man, you can tell this is going to be a long video because I'm already tongue-tied. The Tier 5 Spitfire's paint schemes 
are fine, except for the marine one, which is a blue one with like a, a white lightning bolt down the side. It makes zero sense. As far as I know, that is not historical. And even more odd, the universal paint scheme, which is a gray and green combo, would fit very well for the marine. So it's just very, very odd decision making. As a result of that, if we load into you know one of these maps that's a marine map, you're not actually going to see the marine camo. You're going to see the all-purpose camo. I just I can't hack the weird looking blue that's on there. Um, it it seems odd to me. So I prefer that green and gray marine camouflage that's typically used. So here we go. Match three, Spitfire one A. Uh, we're going to probably lock down the zone. Maybe be aggressive. We'll see what we get here. All right, a little smaller flight this time. There's a flight down, uh, a group of players this time. There's a flight down there, 110B and P-36, and a 109E. So these are good energy fighters, uh, powerful aircraft. We have an unspecialized P-43 and a specialized P-40M-105, which is far better than people give it credit for. And, of course, my specialized Spitfire 1A. So this will be an interesting match. I think someone said something in the chat there. Did they not? Yes. All right. And generally speaking, if people are going to greet, uh, I will also greet back. You are approaching the front line. All right. Off we go. And we have one job and one job only at the beginning, which is probably to take this middle zone. I'm not sure we're going to get it done against all these guys, though. Um, but we need to we need to try. All right. Get right in the thick of it. See what happens here. Spitfire is such a comfortable plane to play, and this one, you know, it's not quite as speedy as the regular Tech Tree Tier 5, and of course you don't have the cannons, but honestly, I don't care. I mean, these machine guns burn stuff down so fast, you really don't have to worry about it. All right, we've also maintained air superiority a little bit here. These guys, this guy's climbing. The 109E is a bigger threat than the heavy. Um, Oh, my sound just cut out. That's a problem I've been having glitch-wise. So those of you watching the video, I apologize. And this P-36 is going to be our next target. Unfortunately, it means I'll be super careful about watching the mini-map because there is a heavy around here that wants me dead. And I have to do that without sound, which is always a little bit of a trick. All right, good deal. And we're going to get him too. Unfortunately, a tier four heavy down tiered from us. We still don't have the zone, but we're working on it. Let's see if we can chase this guy down. Oh, the hurricane's coming in. That would be 60 points. Let's see if we can get that. So this will be enough to cap the zone. So I'm breaking my rule of always go for the plane and back just because time is of the essence here. We need to cap this zone before they get back in the zone. Okay, the 336E is burning in on me. We're in a loop. He's going too fast. Probably above his, he's probably in the yellow on his speed, which means his turn time is shot. And I can out maneuver. We're just going to let that guy pass. Split S underneath. He can't circle with us. He's got to break off. And our buddy's got him. So there we go. Uh, three zones to two. We can sit on this. I'm tempted to. I'm also tempted to go capture a zone because I'm an aggressive pilot. But you know what? 90% of the people who buy this are probably going to do this. They're going to squat on this zone and just let stuff come to them. And so that may be what we do here. Yeah, you know what? The P-43 is headed off. Capture a zone, that's a good thing. Um, so we can play defender here, which is really the, the role that the Spitfire is best suited for anyway. So you can see, even though it's just machine guns, not a problem, right? We're gonna burn down people fairly easily. We have Hurricane 2 coming into the zone. I wish my sound would come back, that'd be lovely. So the trick with defending the airfield, if you are going to do it, and I'm, I'm not a big proponent of doing it because, again, you, you're only getting 40 per every plane you shoot down. I'm going to have somebody open it up on me in a second here. Um, and they get 60 for some of the planes that they shoot down, and that's an issue. 
All right, the 110 is back. So anyway, the, the trick to all this, of course, is stay on top of your kills, right? Burn people down as quickly as you can. Don't let them build up a cap because you can go from half of a cap to a zero cap in no time. So fortunately, there's a couple of us here and the air defense aircraft can mop up whatever they need to. I'm diving to get some HP, by the way, in case you were wondering. And we'll just use that uh, bank speed to go right back up again. That's the other thing is, you know, when you're defending, just stay up high in this zone as much as you can. That'll help you with picking targets and making sure the things don't get ahead of you, right? Um, the capture points don't get beyond your ability to salvage. We're also trying to lure people in a little bit. Like, I want these guys gunning for me, right? Because I know what to do with them. Rudder, little rudder control to bring that circle and drop down on top of him, and he's not going to get out of that. You're not going to outturn a Spitfire, no matter how specialized your 109 is going to be. We're going to see that in the next match as we play the 109. And now it's just a great big game of dance, right? Again, we do not want people getting out in front of us, so we're going to dive on this guy and clear him out as fast as we can. It's fortunate that he's climbing. That makes him a very easy target for us. We burn him out in one pass. Heavy we could chase, but we've got a disgruntled I-16 here. This is going to be a target. And we're going to save his buns because that's going to save us some points. No, we're not because they're coming in too fast, but you get the idea. All right. Such a deadly, deadly thing. You know, you kind of wish you, oh, yeah, I wish I could buy this one separately. Obviously, everyone wishes they could buy this one separately. It's such a good plane. Um, this is superbly overpowered, um, even with the, the guns and the mediocre engine for the tier, right? Uh, Spitfire line in general just needs a little bit of a nerf. Um, I don't even know if it needs a nerf. It needs its flight characteristics switched up a little bit. Um, it needs to fly more like the LA line does. God, who's who's murdering me from behind? Was it one of my own teammates? It felt like it, didn't it? We'll see. The P-43, by the way, if that's you, you're better off capping zones, right, uh, than trying to chase down aircraft over this area. It's just not going to do you much good. Um uh, not not the best served role of your aircraft. Nope, we don't want that. We're going to pirouette. Make sure we don't hit our teammate there. Really, both of these, both of our other teammates are multi-roles, right? They're best served staying offensive, working the edges of the map, and making sure that uh, people are dead. Uh, zones are capped, excuse me. Even a beefy target like the LBSH goes down with time. Mm, let's see if we can swoop down and get our HP back because we are at squall line. Oh, this is juicy. All right, never mind. We definitely want to take down the 109E here at squall line. God, the sound not being here is really, really killing me because I'm having a hard time hearing when uh, anyone's taking me on. Okay, we want to save our guy. If we can, all right, he's out. Let's let's save our P forty here. Yep. All right. Good deal. One and the one ninety can go down, maybe. You take a look at the tier five one ninety. It's interesting. It's been so long since I've flown it. It was one point X. Obviously, things have changed. I wonder how it does in two. I'm sure someone's done a wonderful video about that. All right, we're going to let him have that. I'm going to break off. I'm doing fine on points at this point anyway. <laughs> and uh, we're going to see if we can get our HP back. Well, they have a few left, including their um, their flight there. Did we lose? Oh, we did. Somebody bombed it. Bomberific. So the repair shop is bombed, so we will not be able to catch our breath on HP here. Let's go up. We're going to win this, obviously, which is great. Where are the other last two at? One's over there. They're closing in on him. Where are the other two? They must be over here. Yep, 
There is the heavy. There's the lag. Let's clear the lag because we're running out of time. And we might only have time for one. We're not even going to have time for one kill, I don't think. Will we? Oh, so close. So close. Bummer. Akamatsu, Wing Legend, Marseille. I mean, what more do you want to know about this plane? <laughs> it's a king of the skies. Uh, really, really solid at Tier 5. Um, you know, and again, compared to his Tech Tree counterpart, it's actually it's actually a little, little less good, right? Didn't quite have the engine power. I think it's got the middle upgrade engine. But uh, still, great plane, uh, especially with the pilot that's going to come with it. And there, I knew I shouldn't have left that. See, if we had stolen that kill from our teammate, we could have had an ace medal for shame. And we only captured one zone. We just racked up our personal points. Fortunately, it worked out for us this time, and sometimes it does, especially. It works out more at lower tiers where people don't know to run around and cap, right? Which, you know, one, two... Two zones the enemy capped. They just they kept coming for this one, right? And we capped one, two, three. Uh, if I had been in a multi-role, I would have been working the edge of this map, and uh, we probably would have had air superiority at some point. But I'll take the 25k. I'll take the 19 kills. I'll take the however much 18,000 pilot experience there, and 18 on the wrong turn where you're killing targets over an airfield. Uh, it works well. So there you go. That is the 1A. What more do we need to say about this aircraft? And that's, I didn't even have specialized stuff. I mean, if I really had the full out gear scenario, uh, yeah, that'd be crazy. All right, last one of the night. We are going to fly the E3. I've wanted this plane for a long while. Very excited. Um, as you can see, I've done a little bit of flying with it. I've already got a couple of kill markers there. I do have Hans Weber in it. We've done the same thing, aerodynamics expert there. Um, the E3 Master already buffs the guns a little bit. So I'm more worried about squeezing performance out of this plane. And as you can see, it has a good top speed, a little better cruise speed, um, and very good altitude performance and climb rate. Decent turn time, although obviously not nearly as good as the Spitfire. And this is going to require some trigger discipline on our part. I also haven't done the full paint kit for this one. I've just got the, you know what, for you guys, I will splurge. I will, I will get the real paint out here. We'll do the real deal. So there you go. Summer, winter, desert, marine. Marine's my favorite of all those. Um, yeah, let's do that. And since all of these have a yellow motif instead of a red motif, the uh, multi-roll has a red motif, uh, we'll change this up as well, and we'll go with my favorite. There we go. Leaving the only red our clan symbol for the Drax. There you go. Oops. No, we don't. We, don't want, we want to apply without extension to all these. Be nice if you could do some of this stuff in the hangar uh, while the match is loading, right? So, nonetheless. So, E3, two 20 millimeter cannons overheat in five seconds, but have a decent accuracy on them. Um, and the auto aim, I think, is 2.5. And then you have two 7 millimeter machine guns in the nose, the 30 cals basically in the nose. Um, and I have weapons group two, which is generally those smaller caliber guns slaved to the side button on my mouse. And I have the um, 20, the left mouse button just being fire everything. So what that means in practice is, is that the cannons overheat. I lift up my index finger but keep my thumb down. And the machine guns continue to fire and the cannons can cool off. So I keep a sustained DPS and then burst it up. And in this plane, about half of your DPS comes from your machine guns. That's pretty much true for the 109 line in general. So um, it's, it's really good if you can handle it in that way and kind of keep things going. I got an interceptor in last battle. I don't even know what the interceptor is. Bot speak. All right, so we're five on five. We are down tiered against tier sixes. Spit DB, key 102, XP 54. Our Yak just dropped out. Oof, that's going to be rough. Uh, and my 109 on the other side, 109F. Oh, it's F22 Hunter. I see you and General and Cardinal. Uh, Bow Fighter 5, make 3, XP 44. So this is a good time to advertise for the next video, which will be coming to you. And that is that um, I'm going to do what I normally do, which is cap this one and then try and cap the other one. 
uh, F22 sent me a replay in his 109F, and we're going to review it for you. And so that video is actually already recorded, but it's going to come out after this one. So we'll get a preview of how uh, F22 is going to do over there in this match. So I'm just firing. See my cannons overheat. I'm going to keep the machine guns going. And then once they're off red, boom. And so you can see the weak guns on this become a little better than they should be. Right. Also tend to wait until I'm a little closer to open fire so that I can do that. This plane is just a joy to fly. I mean, it's not as maneuverable as the Spitfire, obviously. That doesn't matter. Um, all that matters is it gives you enough performance to deal with a lot of different threats um, against your airplane. And we'll take that. All right, so we are going to push on to theirs. Now, obviously, they did what would be smart, which is go and take that one. But as you can see, this is a map with three garrisons and two rocket bases. So generally what people do is they take their rocket and then they head to the middle. And so what I've learned to do is, you know, my, my team's going to take the middle. I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to go to the side garrison, take it, and then as the enemy team rotates into the middle to fight over a garrison, I'm going to sneak in the back door and steal their rocket base. So that's the plan. Now occasionally someone doesn't know to move on, and so they hover over this place. Um, and that's fine too, uh, but at this altitude with this airplane, even against tier sixes, I feel pretty pretty good about putting a dent in their ability to defend it, even if another player is here. Guns are overheating, I'm gonna let them cool off. Just gonna burst it. There we go. Same thing, we're just gonna go ahead and let it cool. There we go. That's all we can do here. It really is, because we can't do the other 80 cap points unless an enemy fighter wanders into the zone somewhere. So what we're going to do is move out. Here's a heavy coming in on one of our bombers. It's the P-38J. He doesn't see me, and he is in trouble. All of the guns on this 109 are centrally located. Unfortunately, they are a little less, as you can see there, so he's able to bust the bomber up, but it's still enough. We got the zone. And that is that. Nope, no head-ons in 109s. 109 should never take head-ons. Oof. All right. Turn down the XP-44, and then we're going to move on and capture another zone, hopefully. This, by the way, is good defensive fighting. Bots are programmed to do this. Drag it to the ground, burn your energy out. Oops, did I just rudder under that guy? I did. Oh, it's F-22. And a heavy. See, I have the secret, Hunter. I have seen your replay already. <laughs> so we're gonna see what happens here. Yeah, I can't, I can't get out. Uh, with dodging two to one there, unfortunately. Good play, good play. Fortunately, uh, now they're gonna take that zone back, but as they're taking that zone back, I mean, what? look, we're, we're four zones up, and I'm about to go score this zone. So they're gonna take it back, but then I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna take this zone, and then I'm gonna whack that zone again. And they're gonna have to come back and grab it. So I'm not gonna let the enemy team get comfortable. I am gonna do as much as I can to punish them um, and uh, you know, keep them keep them having to fight, keep them on their toes. Force them to make tough decisions about where to be and what to do and how to defend, all that kind of stuff, right? See, I'm also leaving these. I mean, I don't, you know, oh, he's climbing, we're not gonna get him. We don't wanna hang ourselves out to dry here. We're gonna come back to him. It's okay, especially these, you know, goodness gracious. You saw the, it took a while to kill him, didn't it? Uh, the server desync there. It's okay to come off of air defense aircraft when you're trying to cap a zone like this. There we go, done. And we're still up to four, right? And we know where to head. We know exactly where to head. So we're gonna push on to that zone. How's our team doing? Pretty good, pretty good. I wish we had our Yak-7 though, I do. 
Hopefully it was uh, some sort of technical glitch and not a, not a choice to bow out. All right, they got another one. So you can see we, we can actually almost get up by, uh, get up to uh, our boost speed, even you know, with uh, there being a gap, right? Not as big a gap as there is in the uh, Spitfire. Just reading the chat there, catching up on it. So, interesting. I think if, I think a few of these guys are on fat. I knew they'd do count-ins. They like to do count-ins to play against each other. And uh, so that may be what's happening. We may have gotten ourselves in the middle of a inter-clan war here. Come on. All right, we'll take the ramp. Oh, shoot. That's not good. That's all right. We'll take the loss. Uh, did not see him coming in. I was too busy talking and watching the chat. All right. So what are we going to do here? All right, so it is squall line. So we're going to try and go after these three guys here. Because um, if we can get them, uh, get them out. Oh Lord, there we go. Uh, if you ever have your mouse locked. All right, so the P38J. Oh, he's gonna get to respawn. Yeah, the P38J is gonna get to come back, and so is Hunter in the 109. Should have should have waited a second, fellas. That would have been much much better. All right, I'm gonna push on. See if I can get the bots out of this zone. All right, I think our XP-54. It's interesting. They're all above the rocket base. Do you guys see that? All right, we're not gonna we're not going into that solo, right? That'd be a bad idea. We're gonna let them filter over one at a time. Where are they? They're literally just hanging out over the rocket base. Uh, the game's almost over anyway. We'll get a dive and see if we can shark attack. Good stuff. Even being down a player, we did pretty well there. Not a great personal score, I guess, because I was mostly killing, um, uh, dealing with the uh, air defense aircraft. But yeah, it's an aggressive strategy, but you can see there it paid off, even though my personal point score is not necessarily high. Um, you know, I was able to help us get that rocket base out from under them, and that disrupted the flow of the match in a positive way for our team, allowed us to overcome being down by some by one person. So. Very helpful. There you go. There's the 109E. Not as good as its tech tree counterpart, not by a long shot. The tech tree counterpart um, received an inadvertent buff in 2.0. Uh, in 1.x, the tech tree counterpart had to decide between whether or not you were going to carry the wing guns, um, uh, or the hub guns, excuse me. Good game, buddy. Uh, and... Um, you had to decide if you were carrying the hub gun or not, right? And the hub gun actually negatively impacted your performance. And it does here, too, a little bit, if I remember right. But not a whole lot. I mean, there was there was a real question about whether or not, you know, to do this, um, you know, to put the extra guns on back in the day. And the same with the 109B. There was a real question about whether or not you did that. Now it's a no-brainer. You absolutely should put it on. Um, but the question was, you know, did you want a gun truck 109E that was unwieldy? Or did you want an agile 109E that was a little underpowered? And these days, there's just no choice. There's no question about what you do. It's just overpowered. It leaves no performance, essentially, with those extra guns. And so you get the best of both worlds. And it needs a nerf badly. Um, but anyway, here's the 109E3, a balanced and useful and fun plane. It captured three sectors, knocked nine down. And so there you go. Uh, pretty decent. Uh, I wish we could have done better against the actual pilots themselves. But unfortunately, you know, that's my fault. I wasn't watching the first time. The second time, I stayed in to flip the zone and uh, got jumped by multis. So 
you know, um, I'll, I'll probably put out at least one more video on the E3, and uh, we'll show you what it can do tier for tier against other players. But this will give you a little bit of a taste of it. I think this is a solid plane as well. Obviously, it's not as good as the 1A, uh, but nonetheless, a good pickup and one that I've been looking forward to for a while. So I'm happy to have it in my hangar. Well, thanks for coming along for the journey tonight. I will be out of town next week. I do have a video for you over the weekend, a replay to put out next week. And uh, we'll see how it goes from there, depending on what I can get out um, and what I can do. I will have a small computer with me. Maybe I can throw something out. Um, we'll just have to see, fingers crossed. But I will give you at least one video next week while I'm out of town just to hold you over. And fortunately, in the month of July, I'm not traveling at all. So even though it'll be a little spotty on the release schedule in this month, next month will be uh, a lot more consistent. And I've got some good things planned for you all. So hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're grabbing Heroes of Dunkirk, this will give you a good review on all these planes. You can see them all in action, not specialized, not with 12-point pilots, but just pretty much with what you got out of the box. And if that appeals to you, uh, make it happen. Um, you know, I wish you could buy them individually, but altogether, it's not a bad set. These are all four pretty decent planes. So have a great weekend. Um, enjoy yourselves, and uh, good luck and good hunting in the Operation Overlord and in your marathon for the new pilot. I'll catch you on the next one.